Bradley's home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the microphones just clipped, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep that in there. Um, Brad is my brother. He just got home from tour. He was out for, what was it, eight or nine weeks? It was Seven. a while. Seven weeks. It was a while. Um, but he was on tour with a worship group called Circuit Riders for a few months. Uh, join us today as we talk to Brad about his experience out on the road. Well, come on, you need a drink, partner. Expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. What do you think you're smoking around here? Stop it! You're acting like a child! My brother Brad has been on tour since January 10th, and it is now March. I'm not sure when this episode's going to... January 6th. January 6th, and it's now March. It's March 10th, 11th now. So this episode is going to come out sometime in April, probably. But it's been a while, and by the time this airs, you're going to be back out on tour. So we wanted to capture Brad while he's home for a little bit to talk about his experience on tour with Circuit Riders. But mm-hmm. before we get started, what are y'all drinking today? Um, currently nothing. I know, I'm drinkless as well. I finished I, mine last episode. I downed a glass of iced tea before we started. Time out. Travis, you haven't drank anything since the last episode? Well, now our so secret's out that we record multiple episodes <laughs> in a row, but we had just recorded one like 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Actually, I'm severely dehydrated. Bro, go get some water. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> I hit my face on the mic every time, so I don't hit my feel hat. bad. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what might help you feel better? What? A nice cold glass of orange juice. Mm. Oh, that's what Brad, I'm drinking. Oh, I was just going to ask mm. what you were drinking, but. It's an interesting flex, drinking orange juice on a podcast at 7.30 at night. A minor. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird statement, 7.30 at night. Yeah, I mean, it's like an evening. After dinner, I suppose. Yeah. But that's just because we just ate dinner. All right, let's <laughs> going back. Let's get into it. Um, so, Brad, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? Tell us about Circuit Riders. Uh, just give us a high level overview of what you went out for. So, Circuit Riders is a gospel centered organization, and it's a branch off of YWAM. If you don't know what YWAM is, it is uh, short for Youth with a Mission. Um, and YWAM's focus is the nations. So they go through a three month, um, discipleship training school and circuit riders does the same thing, but YWAM does, they focus on nations. Circuit riders focuses more on college campuses. So what I've been doing the last couple of months is I am a musician, so I have been helping putting on worship nights across the Pacific Northwest. And when I go back out on tour, I'll be out in Canada, Pittsburgh, and Michigan. So that'll be fun. That's awesome. So you're a musician. What do you play? I play the bass guitar. And so you guys put on worship nights across uh, the United States on college campuses. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's a big missions outreach, essentially. Yes. That's really cool. So Circuit Riders, I, I kind of looked up Circuit Riders. It's a band, but it's it's also like a missions agency in a way. Where are they located? Where do they do their training? Um, so they are based out of Huntington Beach, California. So that's where you were for a little bit. I went there for one week training because I didn't. I did not go through the discipleship training school. I just hopped on to be a musician. So I was only in Huntington Beach for a week. Soak up the sun. The sun was very nice. It's so cow sun. So you missed out on the entire winter, essentially. No. No? No, I was in the Pacific Northwest, and apparently Seattle doesn't get snow all that often. And this year, see, they, they got all the snow. So I spent two months in snow. That wow. stinks. That's, At you know, one point, we, we hardly were, got any snow here. Well, this lucky winter. you. <laughs> Brad is the bringer of snow in Pennsylvania. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, but we got cold. So it was just like cold and no snow. It was kind of like, if without the snow, then why? Why even have the cold? It's so pointless. It's a dry, cold winter here in Pennsylvania. 
Actually, that wasn't true for most of Pennsylvania. It was mostly just southeast PA. Yeah. It was, like, really cold and dry the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We actually got to a point in Washington where there were seven feet of snow on the ground. Oh, wow. Dang. Seven feet? Seven feet. Holy That's taller than you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there's a picture to prove it. Wow. Oh, man. We're going to post that on our socials. So, Brad, you've been out on the road for, like, what, three months now, uh, touring, doing concert at different uh, college campuses. So what have you been learning, maybe spiritually, musically? Uh, Yeah, so musically, um, I've only been playing music for about a year and a half, so I don't know a lot. So I learned the Nashville number system, which is like a, a way of... Mm, like transposing. Transposing yeah. chords and stuff. Yeah on the fly and it actually makes things really easy (laughs) now bradley and i we are on the same worship team at our church so when i'm home yeah when he's home so he's going to teach us all these things yes um spiritually that is a that is big because i learned a lot spiritually um there were a lot of things i was unsure of so one thing i really learned was i really need to look into the Bible to find out what's true and what's not true. Because there were, there were a few things that, where I was questioning and I'd ask people and they would they would have the same general answer, but some things were always a little different. So can you give us some context into what you were questioning? Um, I questioned the um, gifts of the Holy Spirit because growing up we never really talked about it, I don't think. Well, we we grew up in like a in a more conservative Baptist church. So, when when you talk about gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, what do you mean? Um, so, when I was out there, it was really tongues, healing, and prophecy. So, I did not understand tongues at all. So, I would look into the Bible and I would go and I would find things about tongues, and I'd be like, "Oh, this is what this means," and I'd watch sermons. I'd literally find everything under the sun because, like, everyone was doing it. I wanted to figure out why they were doing it. So I would read in the Bible, and I would come to a conclusion to what I what I believe in the gifts. Now, prophecy and healing, I did see a little bit of that and understood it. And I would just see some people go, and they'd go up to a random person and be like, hey, this means something on your life. What does it mean? And people would just be like, how did you know that? (laughs) It was crazy. And then healing, we saw, I think my team alone, we saw 73 healings. Wow. Which is crazy. So how did all that shake down? Like when you looked in the scripture to look into, you know, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, what did you, like, what did you conclude? What did you find? Okay. So the one I really dove in for was tongues. Now, I still don't really understand tongues or at least why people do it. Um, So basically, tongues is a known language. And when the Holy Spirit gives Paul the gift of tongues, it's so Paul can go out and reach unreached people groups. And so what I didn't understand was um, people were speaking. uh, It's what sounded like gibberish to me. And like tongues to reach an unreached people group would be like a worldly language. So you think you'd be able to like kind of pinpoint what language it could be, but I couldn't figure it out. So, um, gifts is a really controversial topic. So we should do a podcast episode at some point, like talking about spiritual gifts. Yeah, We should do like a series on spirituality. Mm. It'd be good. We mm. digress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I learned about the gift of tongues is that it's a gift that God gives you to reach unreached people groups. And everyone has their own opinions, beliefs on it. So what I learned is that if I have questions about these things, I need to look in the Bible to find out what I believe on them before someone else tells me what they believe on it. If that makes any sense. Yeah, like discern um, what is true from what is not true by looking in the source of truth. 
right. which is God's word. Right. Amen. So you were working with these people and, and from your study of God's word, you could came to this conclusion on sign gifts or supernatural gifts, speaking in tongues, prophecy, all of these things. But do you ever ask them where in scripture they found these things or what was their find? Did they do go to scripture as well? And come to a different conclusion when you talk to them were they able to not argue their point but express their point from scripture um yeah so when i would ask these questions i mostly just ask these questions to learn not like argue sure debate or, or anything, like debate that. Or anything. Right. i would ask to learn and they would they would always pull up to first corinthians 14 where mm-hmm. the gift of tongues is a it's like a whole chapter right <clears throat> So they would pull up to that. And I feel like you can read that passage and take whatever you want out of it. Um, Like I came into that passage as like a defense, Mm -hmm. like trying to prove what they were doing was wrong and not what the Bible said. But I also think if you read that from their standpoint, it could not be wrong. Right. If that makes sense. Sure. So you can you can read in your own preconceived ideas or notions on what the passage was yeah. supposed to mean. So yeah, what that's... You, you're just trying to find out like what did the original author mm-hmm. actually trying to say? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Then obviously I don't know everything about this, and I'm still willing to learn. So, mm-hmm. aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I just looked at First Corinthians uh, fourteen verse six, and is interesting. Kind of like a explanation of tongues specifically a little further it was like now brothers if i come to you speaking in tongues how will i benefit you unless i bring some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching almost like really in order for tongues to be legit and all this there's got to be something else that comes out of it not just you know gibberish coming from the platform you know what i mean really interesting stuff to look at i know you and i have been doing some personal studying into these things and it's just a constant reminder um no matter what you're studying, what topic you're studying, always go back to the source of truth for the truth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one thing that we've talked about before is um, the idea of relativism and like how multiple people can find different truths by looking at the same thing. But we know that truth is truth. There's only one truth. And um, I've so enjoyed studying these things with you because we've been really diving deep to figure these things out. And we're not going to, on this episode, try to like, express yeah we're not going to try to make you believe what we believe (laughs) (laughs) like we're not going to try to come across and and force a point um that we haven't studied too deeply yet i think we should do that at some point on a future series but um today we're just discussing brad's experiences out on the road yeah we definitely don't have time to delve into that whole discussion although it's, it's an important one and a controversial one in this episode but i think it is a good point that Brad brought up and a good example he set for us on how to approach situations where we have to work and do ministry alongside of other believers who may not um, have the same conclusions or beliefs in certain points of Christianity than we do. Um, You know, he said he asked questions to learn. It wasn't just to argue or debate or beat someone over the head or things. He approached it, you know, in a friendly way. Um, in a con- uh, conversational way, and I think that's something we need to do as well. Obviously, we can't um, deny the truth or, you know, make less of the truth. You know, he and he did that as well as going back to the Word and studying the truth for himself and trying to figure out what does the Bible have to say. So we need to do that, and at the same time, be patient and loving with others who don't necessarily come to the same conclusions as we do. Doesn't mean we can't talk about it or we shouldn't, but you know, there's a way to go about doing that. So I think that was a good example and a good point. Pro tip for our listeners who may be, you know, a newer Christian and or want to learn about these things. Something that's really important to understand is like when you're reading the Bible to read in context, Mm -hmm. like read the chapter before, read the chapter after, or even just read the whole book because you really don't fully understand what they're talking about unless you see what's going on in the whole context. Yeah, those are all great points. And again, it's just the importance of understanding and going back to Scripture. It's so central to all of this. And and as we discuss worship on a broader scale in this series, the core of worship and why we worship can be found in the Word of God, the source of truth. And it even gives us instruction on how to worship. So super important. 
I'm so glad that you had this opportunity, Brad. That's that's amazing. Um, so tell us about something interesting that you have experienced. The, this isn't necessarily trying to teach a point, but just like what's the most interesting thing you experienced on tour, uh, whether it's spiritual or just not spiritual? Um, one thing I have experienced was like, like I said, the gifts, I've never experienced that on at like an intense level like I have. Like, yeah, in church we say, um, hey, this person's sick in the hospital, let's pray for them. Um, but if they're not there, we can't lay hands on them, and the Bible says to lay hands. So, we did a lot of laying of hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, things happen when you lay hands, and that is something I've I've learned. Like, if you're going to pray for someone to get better, ask if you can, hey man, can I... Can I put my hand on your shoulder and pray for you real quick? And the prayer doesn't have to be longer than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. It's always good to go straight to the point and not ramble. Not ramble. <laughs> so, I that actually connects back to a conversation I was having with Travis a while back on the whole idea of redeeming touch in the mm, church. Yeah, that's something that'd be interesting to talk about. Like you said, that crazy things happened when you laid hands on people. Can you give us an example of something you've experienced? Yeah. Um, so I was at um, the University of Utah, the U. We were having a worship night and people just one by one started breaking down in tears. Part of that was because a really good um, message was taught that night. And then we did a healing call. Like we called for anyone who's experiencing pain, depression, or anxiety to just be bold and raise their hands and we can come lay hands, pray for them and just see what happens. So to clarify first, were you, when you called for healing, was this something that you guys were saying like, come forth and we'll heal you? Or was it something that was like, come forward and we're going to pray for healing for you? Yeah. So we would ask them to be bold so they could let us know that they need healing. And then we would tell them, we believe Jesus may heal you tonight. So it's not like if you ra- if you raise your hand, we will pray it's for guaranteed. you and you will right. get healed. That wasn't a guarantee. Right. Um, anyway, back to my story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were in the middle of a worship set when this call for healing took place. And I had wires wrapped around me because I'm plugged in. I got my in-ears in. And I see this kid raise his hand. And the drummer is able to get out to him before I could because I'm tangled in so many wires. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and so he he tells me to come over. So I come over. He goes, yeah, uh, he's got back pain. He hasn't been able to bend over for six years. I think he was in a car accident. I can't quite remember. And we're like, all right, let's pray for him. And within seconds of us starting to pray for him, he just peeled over like, bent like he could touch his toes and it was wild because this kid was weeping and like he's he's my age so i'm like i feel like i could relate to you he's crying he goes the pain's gone Mm. like i've never experienced this before the pain is completely gone and it wasn't like one of those things that they just said it was gone to you know make you go away we saw him the next day at our day two and we were like hey man how's the back feeling he goes no pain. It's gone. That's like, wild. I can do anything. So that was the most wild thing I experienced. I, I kind of did some research into healing before this just to kind of try to understand it a little bit more. And I read an article by Piper, by John Piper, who is basically like, yeah, it's totally valid to pray to God and, and ask him for healing. Like, he could totally do that. But what is not okay is saying, like, come forth and I will faith heal you. Like, that's not, that's not the right, proper way some, to do it. Some would, like Bethel and other churches, are right. like, they believe that not only can God, but God will and he must heal. Right. Like, so, they, they try to declare it on God that he do it now. Right, so that's even a step further. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear about that, that you had these opportunities to experience things that, that we don't experience every day. And um, whether or not these things are true... And from the Lord, you know, it, it puts you to the test to look to the scriptures to discern what is true and what mm-hmm. is good and what is from the Lord. And I think that's something we can all learn 
um, to do more of, right? But kind of getting out of the gifts realm for a minute, tell us about some experiences or maybe one or two experiences you had while actually telling a kid or a teenager or college student about salvation, about Jesus. Backtrack a little bit. Um, a part of evangelism was part of our day two. And what we would do is we would just walk up to strangers. So when you say day two, you mean like the first day you were there, you did a worship night. The yeah. second day it was like you're going to spend the day on the campus evangelizing? Yep. Okay, gotcha. And then we have a, we would have a men's night and a women's event going on at the same time. Nice. So back to what I was saying, um, it's really funny because during evangelism, we just walk up to strangers and just say, hey, I believe that Jesus loves you. What do you think about that? I believe. And then you just, the gospel in like 30 seconds to a minute. And you'd give them time to respond. And what's funny is I got rejected almost every single time. <laughs> um, in a lot of different ways. So I went up to someone and before I even started saying anything after Jesus loves you, he goes, I don't want to hear about it. It's like, what? <laughs> he goes, I don't want your spiel. I was like, uh, okay. Um, do you know where I can? No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to listen to it. I was like, all right, bye. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I got rejected a lot, and pretty much everyone I talked to either just didn't want to have anything to do with it, or they already knew Jesus, knew the gospel, and they were like, like, let's go. I'm a Christian. Let's have some fun. <laughs> um. But there were other people on my team who they would meet up the people and they would have the wildest stories. Like people would just give their lives to Jesus there on the spot. It, some of the stories we have are insane. And maybe not for tonight, but for some other time because we don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> so can you give me one example of a time where you did talk to um, maybe a college student about the gospel and that was the moment that their eyes were just open to it all. Did that happen or did that mm -hmm. mainly happen in like the bigger group events? It happened in both. It's just this tour wasn't my timing. Mm. Um, I believe everyone has their ups and downs, but like, I guess my down was first leg. I, no <laughs> one, no one would talk to me about Jesus, but that's okay. There's, I always have second leg coming up here and maybe that'll be different you know all this all this talk about like uh, evangelism reminds me of my time when i did open air evangelism in new york city i went down there for three days and like the very first the very first interaction i had with like a human being trying to evangelize like i didn't even start talking to him like i had a track in my hand or whatever and he's like you came from an effing monkey and then just walked away. And I was like, well, that that's great. This is going to go really well. <laughs> like, so that was my first experience. I mean, the rest of the trip ended up going pretty well, but so I can relate to that. There was this one story, and I'll try to make this really quick. It wasn't me, but someone on my team met someone on the side of the road. He's 19 years old. He got dropped off. He's flying from Baltimore because his family got into some bad stuff and people were trying to kill him. So Jeez. he flew to Seattle and he got dropped off right in front of one of my teammates. And my teammate went up to him, hey, what's up? I believe Jesus loves you and I believe he's got a plan for your life. And he goes, can you help me find this place? So he, I don't think he really registered that right away. And so... This kid, he's homeless. He's looking for a youth shelter. Um, so while this kid and my teammate are trying to find this youth shelter, my my teammate is just telling him the gospel and everything. And then we all meet up with this kid. And we're like, hey, we believe Jesus can turn your life around right now if you commit to living for him. And so he did. And we got him in contact with our host mom. And our host mom got him into school. He's got food. I know I said his host mom set him up with that, but like it's because of the grace of God, this host mom was able to help this kid out. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely you you see the power of the Holy Spirit working in order that this this kid 
you know, opened his eyes to the Lord. Like, do you see the spirit working ahead of that and working these things together so that God may be glorified? Mm -hmm. Not only that, but he's using the church to bring glory to him. Mm -hmm. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, so I think it's just cool that, you know, you've had this opportunity to go out there and um, witness to people and just learn and even get into different environments where people don't always believe exactly the same things as you i think sometimes we can get into our comfortable bubble of life um so i think it's good to get out there and then put put into practice the things that you are learning i think that should be something we are all doing it doesn't always mean you have to go out on tour to do that but even in our own everyday lives you know we should be sharing the gospel being a witness yeah and i think just to bring us back home as we conclude sitting around and talking about theology uh, in a philosophical light is always great it's fun it's a great way to discern truth and, and to get to know things on a deeper level, but it'll get us nowhere if it doesn't drive us to action. Mm-hmm. And so I know Brad, by take, by taking this step out of his comfort zone to go share the gospel, has really challenged me personally to be more effective in the community just where I live. You know, I, I don't have to go out on tour to share the gospel, and neither do you. But by the grace of God, Brad was given this opportunity to take the step and learn. Yeah, I think I think it's just a good, such a good example because Brad did exactly what we should do when we come into contact with things we don't understand or don't know about or unfamiliar with us. We go right back to God's word, and we we dig deep and we learn, and then we use that. Um, understanding and knowledge that we gain to apply it back into our lives that was a challenge to us and we're going to challenge you our listeners go out of your way this week be an encouragement to someone tell them about jesus you know it's hard for us to do this as well it's challenging it's hard because it's against you know our our fear of being rejected you know we don't want to go out there talk to someone get shut down and because we fear that we tend to not go and talk to people about jesus but Take a step of boldness this week. We know that because of the Holy Spirit and because God is going to do what he said he will do, God's people will be saved by the blood of the Lamb. So have boldness and confidence as you go out and preach the gospel. Know that Jesus' sheep hear his voice. I just want to highlight, because this is in the greater context of our series on worship, how Brad's life is an example of how worship is more than just praise music right and he's been dedicating a lot of his time to that and that certainly is a a way we can express worship he's making sacrifices of his time of his energy of his talent um of his finances to do this and also by meditating on the word and through prayer um so through the way he's he's giving his life as a living his his own body as a living sacrifice you know which is his reasonable act of worship so again even someone who is involved full time right now in the ministry of of worship music or praise music he's also um expressing worship in in all the other ways that we talked about in the previous episode so as we conclude today um Bradley thank you for coming in this is a really cool experience. Yeah, thanks for having me. You leave next week to go back out on tour. And by the time this episode airs, you'll I think you'll still be out on the road. So, awesome. Well, to our listeners, thank you for tuning in today. Remember to subscribe. When you subscribe, it's the best way to get every new episode automatically downloaded to your device each week. Also, follow us on the social medias like Facebook or Instagram. Um, this is the best way to get the new content and to see announcements and get behind the scenes and get behind the scenes content. Um, If you want to join our closed Facebook community, just message us on Facebook keyword happy. Uh, We're going to drive Travis with random messages that just say happy from random people. So (laughs) do that. That'd be awesome. And um, yeah, have a wonderful week, everybody. 